Welcome, friends. We are so glad that you're a part of Shoreline Online. And uh, we're just honored to do life together with you. And we want you to know sincerely from our hearts that we love you so much. We really do. Uh, we do something here at, uh, at Shoreline uh, that you might be unfamiliar with. Maybe many of you um, that are a part of the Shoreline family, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But some of you have maybe never attended a service. And at the beginning of every message, we stand to recite something that we call the Shoreline Creed. It just helps to recalibrate our thinking and it helps us to remember that the core of Christianity is grace. Yes, the Bible has lots of information and thoughts about how to live and how to navigate in life. But at the end of the day, what Christianity is, is the beauty of what God has done for us. And we capture that in our Shoreline Creed. So let's all of us stand to our feet, and we're going to say this out loud together. If you're new, of course, you can just read along. But let's say this together. You guys ready? Here we go. I am loved by God. I cannot earn it. I cannot lose it. I am forgiven and made brand new. In Christ, I live with passion and purpose. I am empowered by the Spirit to be the church in the world and to live this love revolution. Come on, let's give God praise for that, and you may be seated. I want to take a couple of minutes here today to talk about how it all began. And when I, when I say how it all began, I'm not talking about how Shoreline began. That began 33 years ago. I'm not talking about when I began my journey on earth, that happened 59 and a half years ago. I'm not even talking about the beginning of our nation. And we're going to be celebrating in just a couple of days, 244 years as a nation. When I talk about going back to how it all began, what I'm really referring to is going all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Let me read. It says, in the beginning, God created. Let that thought sink in for a moment. In the beginning, God created. You know what? You're not an accident. Uh, you're not just, you know, a mistake or, uh, or, or, or you're not just a random outcome of, of evolution. You're the on-purpose creation of God. In the beginning, God created. If you don't accept that as a premise, if you don't accept that as a reality, then what you default to is this idea that we are, you know, living our lives just, you know, like a bunch of chemical reactions with skin on it, trying to navigate through life with a whole bunch of other people who are having chemical reactions with skin on it. If you take God out of the equation, you... You lose all of this sense of, of, of worth. You lose all of this sense of, of destiny. <laughs> Laura and I, we, uh, we celebrated uh, uh, marriage. We've been married now for, for uh, 34 years. We celebrated a couple of weeks ago our, our 34th anniversary. And, uh, and, and if you take God out of the equation, that means that there was no, you know, leaving your mom and your dad and becoming one flesh. There was no, you know, what God has joined together, let no one separate. There was no sense of destiny. There was no sense of that there was a higher purpose to us meeting and, and, and enjoying our lives. And what it really boils down to, if you take God out of the equation, is that, you know, I had some chemical reactions and, and uh, in response to the chemical reactions in Laura, we were just two, you know, random evolved people that were having chemical reaction what what kind of basis for love is that I mean do you go out on an anniversary date and just say well you know we're just two random chemical reacting people interacting with each other through life you know the value to life the beauty of life comes from recognizing that that we are created by God and let's not stop there because uh, that's just the foundation we're not only created by God, but we're actually created in his image as well. That, that part of the story just happens a few verses down from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. 
and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Wow. This passage is profound in its implications, profound in its, in its understanding. We are created by God in the image of God. And, and I think that this passage, a, passage actually answers some of the deepest questions that people have in life. If you think about some of the, you know, the, the deeper issues, if you think about you know, the, the questions that we carry, the urgent kind of questions that people have, this passage addresses them. Questions like, who am I? Questions like, why am I here? Questions like, what is my value? When, when you come to grips with the fact that you are created by God in his image, it answers those kinds of questions. And this is like the foundation to everything. Our ability to navigate in life, our ability to, to dream dreams, our ability to relate in, in healthy ways with other people are totally tied to us coming to grips with this truth and believing it with all of our hearts. When you believe that you're created by God in his image, it determines everything. Because what you believe determines how you behave. And how you behave, well, that obviously um, determines the quality of your life and the quality of the life of others around you. The very first mention of man in the Bible is connected with the idea that we are created in the image of God. That's where our core identity comes from. If you don't have that as a, as a foundation, then what you're going to do is substitute your, your God-given identity for something less, for something that doesn't have the power to, to guide you and to strengthen you. And it doesn't have the, the, the wisdom um, associated with it that determines how you relate to other people. Um, if you don't have God as your identity that you are created by him and in his image, if that's not the core of who you are, then you're going to settle for something uh, a lot less significant. Like a lot of people, their identity comes from what they do. They look at the roles in their life. They look at the fact that maybe they're a father or they're a mother or, you know, they're a plumber or a doctor or a lawyer or, or a teacher. And their identity comes from what they, they do. For some people, their identity comes from their accomplishments. They, they look at the plaques on the wall or they look at their trophy case or they look at the things that they've done in their history and they, and they gain their identity from that. Some people gain their identity from their associations. They, they look at, you know, the organizations that they're a part of. Maybe, maybe a political organization. Maybe they're a Democrat or they're a Republican. Or maybe it's a school fraternity that they, that they were a part of, you know, or a sorority. And they, they gain their identity back from their college days. Um, I, uh, I bought a motorcycle like, you know, 15 years ago, and it was a, it was a Harley, right? And, and some, most Harley uh, bikers, they, they, they don't have this attitude, but some Harley bikers actually think that because they drive a Harley that they're superior uh, over those who drive like a Kawasaki or a Honda or something like that. And what's really interesting is that they have a group. Um, Harley owners have a group, and, and the group they're a part of is, is called the Hogs. You're, you're, you're a member of the hog if you have a, a Harley uh, motorcycle. Now, now think about that for a moment. Some people's identity is the fact that they are a hog. They're nothing but a, a pig. How can that have the power to, you know, to navigate and give you the strength and the wisdom to, 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 to make wise choices in life? Some people, uh, you know, they gain their identity from their ethnicity. And I get that. You know, uh, Laura comes from a Polish background and, and I come from a Dutch background. And so there is, you know, a part of our identity that's wrapped up in our ethnic heritage and all of that. And you think about, you know, there's people that have a Latin and other people that have Hispanic. Other people have an Asian background. And there's things to appreciate. There's beauty in all the different cultures. Um, but even that as an identity is not strong enough to give us the power to navigate through life the way God wants us to. 
Because if you think about, you know, how people gain their identity, some people gain their identity through the eyes of other people, approval or disapproval. Some people's identity is wrapped up in who they want them to be. And none of them are substantive enough. In fact, a lot of ways that people get identity from changes, like roles change. You, you, you might be a father or a mother with kids in the house, but then the kids grow up and they leave the house. And then where is that identity there? Or if your identity comes from your accomplishments or your trophy case, come on. Some of you are going back 25, 30, 40, 50 years and your identity is wrapped up in something that happened so long ago that nobody cares. I was going through some old you know, stuff at the house and I, and I found this, this trophy. This is a trophy that I received when, uh, when I was the MVP of Little League in my small town. This little trophy, even the, you know, the, the little plaque, you know, uh, came off. If I wrapped my identity, you know, in something that happened so long ago, that doesn't have the power to influence my life, to, to, to cause me to make wise choices. But some people are still reliving the fact that they caught the touchdown pass that won the, 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 the championship for their, for their district. And that's where their identity comes from. We need something stronger than that. We need to embrace the fact that we are created by God in his image. And when we embrace that, man, it does something to us. Especially when we think about our place in the world amongst other people in the world. We recognize, you know, that that if we're created by God in his image, it's, it's got a... It's got a unifying factor. It's what brings us all together. It's what, it, it's what defines us. It's, it's who we really are. And I want you to consider this for a moment. When you go to the original language in the Hebrew and you take Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, that we are created in the image of God, that word image actually means duplicate. God used himself as the blueprint in his design of you. That makes such a huge impact. Now, of course, there are two irrefutable laws of the universe. There is a God and you're not him. I'm not trying to say that you're God, but you are the most like God when you think about everything in creation. You are the most like God. You are made in his image. And that, and that reality has profound implications. L- l- let me give you a, a couple of thoughts. When you embrace by faith the fact that you are made by God in his image, well, there's another couple of things that you can, you can draw conclusions from that truth in that will really bless your life. L- like this one for, X, for instance. If you're created by God in his image, it means that you are uniquely loved. It's the truth. You have no idea how much God loves you. And you know what? You're going to spend the rest of your life uh, coming to grips with it, understanding it more fully and more deeply. In fact, I think that when we get to heaven, we'll spend all of eternity learning about how much God loves us. But a starting point, you can just look at creation, the beauty of creation, the magnificent sunsets, the the, uh, the, you know, the mountain peaks, the, the expanse of the ocean, the lush green valleys, the variety of animals and plants and food and all of that. You can see the love of God in creation. You can see the love of God in the relationships that God has brought into your life. But if you ever doubt how much God loves you, all you got to do is look at the cross. For God so loved the world. There, there's, there's a connection between the creator, and being loved by the creator. There's a connection there. And you can see it in the, in the lives of parents. Laura and I have had the privilege of bringing uh, three children into the world. You, you could say uh, that we created three children. And, and, and when those children come into your life, there's a, there's a love connection there that, that is the byproduct of that, of that creation, that that you had something to do with bringing these people into the world. And I I get it. I did the heavy lifting. I was the one that was responsible for the major work in this this scenario. Yeah, if you believe that, I've got some land for you uh, in Florida, in the swamps. But here's the reality. Moms and dads, you know this. 
you bring creation into the world, there's a connection of love that, that is undeniable. It's a force of nature. In fact, as our kids grew up and they got involved with athletics, and so, I can't tell you how many times Laura went mama bear you know, on, on opposing teams and, and fans, you know, when they cheered against our children. And in fact, she is even now still banned from some sporting complexes because of, you know, that emotional connection to who she brought into the world. There's an intensity of love there that's, that boggles the mind. You, created by God, in the image of God, are loved more than you could ever imagine. And one of the byproducts of understanding and embracing by faith that you are created by God in his image. Not only are you, you know, loved uniquely, you have immeasurable worth. Over and over, this idea that you are created uh, by God. And, uh, and how can you calculate the worth of that? You know, the... the the Bible talks about, you know, how a bird created by God is sold for pennies and so on. But we are actually the only ones created in his image. And we have, oh man, a, a worth that cannot be calculated. And I know some of you who, who are um, a part of our service today, you're wondering just about how valuable you are. You think back in your life about the decisions that you've made and you say, I, I cannot be worth all that much my behavior has devalued me can i tell you you cannot behave yourself out of your value you might feel um devalued in your own thinking but it but that's wrong thinking that's not the right thinking from god's perspective you never lose your value i was i was trying to think of a way that i could illustrate this for you today and 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 so i i got a hundred dollar bill okay this is this is $100. If I asked you today if you wanted this $100 bill, I'm sure that every one of you would raise your hand and say, I'll take it. I'll take it. And it's good. It's a nice, clean, crisp $100 bill. And if I took this $100 bill and I, and I crumpled it up and I you know, threw it on the floor and I stepped on it, would you still want it? Yeah, you would. You'd still want it. If I took it a step further and I took this $100 bill and I put it into a bowl of mud... Right, and I and I wipe mud over all over this bill. So here, here's this hundred dollar bill, and it's disguised now. It's covered with mud. Would you still want it? I bet you would, and so would I, because this hundred dollars is still a hundred dollars, even though it's covered by mud. We know that by the blood of Jesus, this hundred dollars could be cleansed. This hundred dollars could be cleaned. This, this hundred dollars hasn't lost its value. This hundred dollars is still a hundred dollars. And I want you to know that no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've done, no matter how many poor decisions you've made, you haven't lost your value. You haven't lost your worth. You're just as valuable to God as if you had never sinned. Understanding that you were created in the image of God determines your value beyond your behavior and you have immeasurable worth and, and then think about this created by God in his image not only uh, causes you to understand that you are uniquely loved and that you have immeasurable worth but somewhere when you recognize that you are created in the image of God it it does something to your to your sense of of of, of being, it does something to your DNA, it does something to the inside of you that, that causes you to recognize that you are designed for more, that you are designed for victory. If you're bumping along in life right now and you're overwhelmed by circumstances, you're overwhelmed by drugs or alcohol or, or, or maybe you're just making poor decisions or maybe your dreams are too small and, and, and you're living what you think is an insignificant life, when you embrace the fact that you were created by God in his image, it changes everything. You recognize that you were designed for victory. You're designed to overcome the challenges in life. And I get it. We're living in unprecedented times. I know this is, this is crazy, right? 
and we've, we've got economic challenges, and we've got this disease that's out there, you know, and we, we, we don't know what's going on with that. It's going up. It's going down. It's, it's crazy, right? And we can't do the things that we used to be able to do, and, and, and sometimes those emotions and feelings can be overwhelming. Throw on top of that a lot of the, you know, the racial conflicts that have been bubbling to the surface, and, and there's a lot of people are, are wondering about their lives. Don't lose sight of the fact that you are created by God in his image because it determines this sense of destiny about your life. You can dream big dreams. You can accomplish great things. You can overcome and you will get to the other side. That's gonna happen for you and for me. We're not accidents of evolution. We're not the byproduct of just random chance. We are the on-purpose creation of almighty God and it makes all the difference in the world. And then let me just close with this final thought. If we are created by God in his image, then by you know, some really easy reasoning, we can recognize that we are a reflection of who he is. We're created in his image to be a reflection of God in the world. We're here to reflect his wisdom. We're here to reflect his priorities. We're here to reflect his values. We're here to reflect his love and his wisdom, his grace, his mercy. And we're here to reflect his glory. In fact, the Apostle Paul was making that point in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. All of us then reflect the glory of the Lord. We need to embrace and believe that we're created by God in his image. It changes everything about our lives. We are loved. We are of immeasurable worth. We are designed for victory. But here's something that I really want you to understand and embrace. And honestly, it's the whole point of my message. Not only are we created in the image of God, every single person. We are all image bearers of almighty God and it doesn't matter your ethnicity it doesn't matter your background it doesn't matter anything every single one of us are unified around this truth we are all created in his image which means that every single person is uniquely loved and every single person is destined for victory And every single person is of immeasurable worth. And every single person is here to reflect his glory. You know, when our son Caleb was relocated to heaven, Laura and I, we went on this passionate passionate search to understand what heaven was like. So we read every single book that we could. And we scoured the Bible for verses of scripture that would just give us glimpses and and insight into what heaven was like. And and you know what was really interesting? One of the the remarkable truths that came out of our our passionate search was that heaven is filled with diversity. That, That every tribe and tongue, that every group of people, that Everyone, regardless of their ethnicity and background, they're they're in heaven. It's like one of the distinctives of heaven. And it's one of the things I love about our church shoreline because we have such rich diversity. We have people from every walk of life and we we come together and we worship God and all the the ethnicities are, are represented at shoreline. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that we come together and worship. And you know what? Heaven is like that. I was reading this verse in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. It says, And I looked, and behold, a great multitude that nobody could number. So this huge crowd of people from every nation, from every tribe, every people and every language, We're standing before the throne of the Lamb. And they were singing, worthy, worthy, blessing and glory 
and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. Embracing the truth that you are created by God in His image changes the way you think about yourself. And it also changes the way you think about every other person. And it brings us to this place where we say, God, use me to make it on earth as it is in heaven. How you doing, Fido? We're go, Fido, looking good. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see the bloom of love, me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful What an incredible, incredible song. What a wonderful world that we can help make happen when we embrace the truth that we're created by God in His image. And not just us, but everyone in the world. Father, I pray that you would give us the insight, the revelation of this truth. Father, help us to embrace that we are created by you in your image and let the truth of that, Lord, radiate in every part of who we are. And then, Father, help us to recognize that everyone around us, family, friends, neighbors, people different from us, all the backgrounds, all the races, all the languages, all the people. We're all image bearers of you. Loved uniquely, of immeasurable worth. 
designed for victory, to reflect you in the world. In Jesus' name. If you wouldn't mind.